was the resident choreographer and assistant director of the Houston Grand Opera in 1982 83. Suddenly I was sent to New York City because they needed someone to take notes for the first reading of a little bit of the piece at Juilliard. My, at that point, my fiance, my husband-to-be, was a photographer, and I guess David knew who he was and asked him if he wouldn't like to come in and take some pictures of the rehearsal process. There's Lenny's music stand next to his score. Soda, cigarettes, cough drops, Tums. That's why Arthur's great. He sees. He... And the story goes, Stephen Wadsworth was writing an article, I believe, for Opera News. He wrote and said, can I come and interview you? He went, P.S., interested in librettos. And Lenny had him come to interview him and said, well, you're interested in librettos. Well, you know, what do you have in mind? And he said, a sequel to Trouble in Tahiti. Trouble in Tahiti, it just takes that era before we even knew that it wasn't an era of all joy. But Lenny saw already where it might go or where it was going, and not just in the stories, but in his music. And, oh, I love this one. Here he is conducting. This is him conducting his music. I think that's so extraordinary about Leonard Bernstein. He just captures what it is, when we are, where we are in this country. And he did it with Trouble in Tahiti, which he certainly did it with West Side Story. And he also did it with A Quiet Place. <laughs> David Gockley had a lot of courage to put this piece on. At that time, which was dealing with suicide in the family, a son being gay, and, and to do that in Houston, Texas in 1983, the fact is, is that Lenny knew he was ahead of the time. He had to know, because we have this picture of him holding a gun to his head, and he was saying, this is what the critics are going to do to me. But, you know, it didn't stop him, did it? His energy was a generous energy that everyone was able to do their best, past what one thought one could do. At one point, his press agent knew there was a photographer around, so she called up Arthur and said, uh, well, gee, Lenny needs a, a passport photo. <laughs> that this was his so-called passport picture shooting, which was not just passport photos. And so he gave the box to Lenny, and Lenny said, oh, is this for me? He said, well, one of them's for you, and one of them is for you to sign to Greta. And he wrote this beautiful little note on the bottom, and he spelled my name right. Well, my name is spelled G-R-E-T-H-E. There are not too many Gretas spelled G-R-E-T-H-E. And I looked at it, and I went, Lenny, how, how did you know how to spell my name? And he said, oh yeah, you know, I noticed that one day, and I took, I took note of it. He took in everything and nothing went beyond his notice, which is perhaps also why he could write about the time, during the time, or even before the time. Arthur came back down again for the opening and was there for the cast party, um, which was at a hotel, and, and, and his kids, of course, were there, including being thrown by his kids into the pool, fully dressed. <laughs> coming out of the pool because he wasn't expecting this at all and then he changed into his robe and without another, you know, missing a beat, he was cigarette in hand and playing the uh, keyboard probably outside and, uh, you know, it was a very non-professional side of Lenny. But, you know, he just had this extraordinary joy of life and joy of living and he just spread it out and he just shared it with everybody. So I am very much looking forward to this premiere myself. For me, it was this memory of this remarkable experience that grew deeper and deeper with every rehearsal. I'm really looking forward to revisit it musically and as a total theatrical event.